What is it, buddy? Yeah, Daddy's gonna go outside. Nice, beautiful day. Oh, God. Sorry, I'm gonna try to do this one-handed. Today, it is such a beautiful day, and winter is fast approaching. <clears throat> I figured, set this stuff down real quick that I would go ahead and get another one of my cars ready for winter. But what does that mean? Well, I've already gotten a Tahoe. You can see it's sitting out there looking like a new polished penny. But washing, getting all the fall leaves off of it. Daggummit. You can see it's dirty and everything. But what is uh, getting it ready in tail? Everybody does it a little different. For me, it's just putting a really good protecting coat on the exterior of the car. Now, I keep my cars waxed. As you, as, if you've seen any of my videos, you know by now, I keep them waxed. A, wa a good wax will last you a couple months at best, depending on how regular you put it on. But let's face it, during the wintertime, you're not going to get out here and wax your car. Number one, it's too cold for you. Number two, it's too cold for the wax. So what I'm going to be doing to this one is putting on a actual sealer. The difference between wax and sealer is waxes tend to be um, more man, um, more natural, carnauba based, stuff like that. Whereas sealers are man-made. They're all synthetic polymers. So they last longer. They stay on longer and they just last longer. A good sealer, if you're keeping your car in a garage, will last up to a year. Well, I have no garage, so I typically get about four to five months out of a out of a good sealer, and um, yeah, so let's get on with it. I'll show you what I'm using, and I won't really describe the whole process because anybody that knows how to wax cars knows how to put on a sealer. So I just figured I'd do a really short video: the before, the after, and explain why I'm doing it. Yada yada yada. So let's stay tuned, and I'll show you what I'm using next. All right, what do I use? I, uh, like I said, I, I typically use a synthetic sealer for my getting my cars ready for wintertime for the sole reason they're gonna be sitting outside. They need more protection during the winter because of all the crap to put on the roads and and just because of the harsh weather, you know, snow, ice, whatever. And what I use is Grio's One Step Sealer. Yes, there's better stuff out there, I know. But I have found, that, like, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I like to support my local businesses. This is one of the things they carry. And it, I, it came with the kit that I bought, because I bought their 6-inch Random Orbital Sander uh, Polisher. Dang it. And it came with it. Well, I tried it. I'm very impressed. It put a heck of a shine, as you can tell by my Tahoe out there. It put a heck of a shine. And it did what it said it was going to do. It lasted. So that's why I use it. And this bottle is about out. So I went and picked up a, another bottle. Of course, the smaller bottle that comes with it is enough to get you to want to buy it. That's, I've actually done three and a half cars with that bottle. So it's lasted pretty good while. It doesn't take much. <clears throat> but yeah, I bought the kit. And that works really good. And then I... Then I was like, wow, you know, there's a lot of smaller areas on these cars, the bumpers, the mirrors, the A-pillars and stuff like that. And I was like, well, that one worked really good. So let me get their smaller one. So I bought the three-inch model too. Lifesaver. Love it, love it, love it. But again, the reason I do it is because, and I hate to be repetitive, but I just want to make sure I get it in there. The reason I do it is because it's sitting outside in the elements. It, it gets harsher weather during the winter, you know, all the crap to put on the roads and everything, the temps, the amount of stuff that falls from the sky during the winter time, and just, you know, it's just, winter time is just so much more of a hostile env environment, so that's why I'm gonna do it. But the first thing you wanna do is make sure your car is clean, so I'm gonna wash it. It's not real dirty, but it's a little dirty, so first thing you wanna do is wash it, dry it, of course, and then um, 
make sure it's in a cool spot you want it cool to the touch so by the time I get done washing it I'll probably have to move it over into the shade but I'm not gonna sit here and make you watch me wash it you've seen me do it before and everybody knows how to wash a car now so I'll skip that I won't bore you with it and we'll be back with the uh, polishing step next all right two things one two <laughs> did I forget to mention as you can see just about finished washing the car I gotta dry it off but during my normal washing regimen during the drying process I would use some form of spray-on wax I've been using the Griots which is phenomenal but I've also used this I've been alternating between that and Lucas slick mist it works really good too and both of these have a drying agent so you just spray it on your your drying towel and then you know wipe your vehicle a little bit goes a long way in these with these sprays I have found that Griots leaves a little bit better of a shine a little bit better protection but enough of that what I'm talking about is I would normally be doing that during the drying process well since we're going to be waxing and applying a sealer at the same time there's no need to do that because what you want to do is you know if your paint is in good condition which as many of you know that this is there's a, a few spots and we'll go into that later but um then I don't need to the paint correct or anything like that but if you do need to do any paint correction after the washing would be the time then you want to apply the sealer then you want to apply your wax you want your sealer on first because that's your your protection and then you get your your color and your shine from your waxes and your polishes but yeah, I just wanted to mention that to you and something that so many people uh, overlook and that is the license plate whenever you're doing this and I always do it once a year regardless as part of my once a year regimen take off your license plate look how dirty it is behind there yeah you want to protect and wax that too so take off your license plate and don't apply your normal spray on waxes at this time and you'll be good to go and as predicted here comes the sun so we're gonna have to play musical cars here in just a minute but another thing i wanted to touch base on you while you're drying your car as you can see i've got mine washed up all nicely clean washed still got dry the tires <clears throat> but while you're drying it look at your paint in the sunlight and see I don't know if it'll come through, but right in here, along this edge, there's like some scuff marks. I don't know if you can see it or not. I hope it's coming through. Right in here, right there, all along this ridge. And also, down the side, along this, you can see the scuff marks. You should be able to see that in real good while you're drying your vehicle you need to be looking for this stuff so you can make a mental note and if you're not really good at remembering stuff which not everybody is take some blue painters tape and mark it the reason for that is because that's the place that needs special attention when you go to do your waxing now what that is from on mine is get the camera straight ah, there we go what that is from on mine car cover cheap car cover from AutoZone I put it out here because they're doing road construction up the road less than half a mile from my house and the dust is horrendous and then I got a couple of teenagers one two three four houses up they just love doing donuts and dust on their four-wheelers <sighs> that's a whole different story but what happened was the car cover you know I have it on here so it won't come off you know in the wind but the wind gets up under it and it sits there and baffles it whips the car cover from the inside and what that's doing is it's rubbing on those edges because that's where it's tight everywhere else it gets up under it because it's loose but then as it as the wind whoops and blows and gets under there it rubs it on those edges so now i got to pay some special attention to that but yeah the point is is while you're while you're drying your car if you know you're going to be waxing it or putting a sealer on it like i'm doing while you're drying it pay careful attention to what's going on and look for any marks that you need to take care of.
it's easier to do it now than later all right get her out here under the canopy of the trees because you can see it's starting to get very sunshiny up there and the paint will start getting hot and although you could do it in the sunlight it, it just makes for a lot more work because of a lot more scrubbing involved when i'm out here in the shade and here let me show you what we're going to be using i have a bucket with some water in it in case i get it on something that i really want to get it off of it's easier to get it off right then just wipe it off with wet water <clears throat> have my polisher and polishers are not necessary but i have found that it goes a lot quicker like i can do this whole car in an hour and a half two hours max with a polisher where it take you know pretty good while by hand plus if there's a spot that needs to be buffed out if you will it's a lot easier you get more speed you can control the speed and everything whereas with your hand you only get two speeds and a lot of times that ain't enough assortment of pads this is a correcting pad by griots to fit their their buffer or polisher got the hand applicator because let's face it there's some places you just can't get with a big old machine polisher so you can get in there by hand with the applicator excuse me and of course you got to have your uh polishing rag towel got my small polisher like i was saying with its correcting pad one step yeah thank you the one step sealant like i was telling you about works great and painters tape i'm bowed out so i don't know if i'm having enough what do i use that for let me show you real quick all right the painters tape you don't want to run your polisher up on on your rubber weather strip or plastic pieces so it's always a good idea to just run a piece of tape down that and tape it off i mean it's simple it's cheap it's not that hard to do so why not do it because let's face it we don't want that white residue all over our rubber never want white residue on your rubbers <laughs> that's how i found that out but as you can see it's very simple to put on so why not do it it protects like i said your weather stripping from getting that residue on it it, it protects your weather stripping from being beat up by the polisher so why not all right as you can see i've got everywhere taped up that i feel that i'm gonna need to and we're gonna take care of this crap with something else the mcguire's ultimate protectant or plastic trim restore is crap i've done a video on that and i'll post that up top so i do not recommend it because it leaves this crappy residue well that's a whole nother video but i have it taped up everywhere i think i'm gonna need it not gonna worry about this because this will be done by hand taped up around that this will be taped up this will be done by hand and the three inch orbital sander and again <clears throat> i use the orbital sander number one because it's quicker number two i get a better result because i can apply more speed more pressure with it you know as i as i need it uh so if if you've been thinking about getting one don't be scared of it it is very hard to burn through it. i mean you have to have it wide open and just hold it in one spot for a long period of time to burn a hole in your paint so you know the the old days were people just using a big the big heavy duty buffers with tennis wheels and stuff on it they're not random orbital and all that stuff they just sit there and it's like a big die grinder those days are gone the random orbital, orbital sanders and polishers <clears throat> work great very very hard to burn through or mess your paint up you can do it if you get right here on the edge or something just like i said hold it if you just hold it right there or go real slow with it on high speed you can do it i'm not saying it's impossible but it's very hard so don't be scared of one i highly recommend getting one it makes the job so much easier all right boys and girls now for the moment of truth there's no rocket science behind this the main thing is is if you do get a random orbital polisher just set it fell over on the ground so i get the scrap off of it if you do get one main thing is make sure you get your pad centered as 
perfectly as you can. Mash it down on there real good, okay? A little bit of dust in it because I just used it the other day on the top and it dried out. But yeah, like I said, there's no magic formula. Take whatever you're going to use, shake it up real good because your chemicals will tend to separate a little bit. No matter what kind of chemical it is, natural or man made, it will want to um, separate a little bit. This is what I like about these pop open top. This is why I went and got the other bottle because this one's about out. Now this is a bit much, but the reason I do it is because the pad's dry. So what you want to do is you want to take it and just kind of work it. And this is doing two things. It's loading the pad a little bit, plus it's distributing the product so when you turn it on it does sling. See my pad is now lube. And remember in the video earlier, there's marks right here I want to pay special attention to. But it's just like applying any wax. Just spread it on there a little bit. And go to town. We're going to special attention right there because that's where that was marked for. And Griot's actually recommends crossing their product. In other words, back and forth and then up and down, or up and down, back and forth, whatever works best for you. But they actually recommend you crossing your pattern. That way you get complete coverage. And as you can see, when I get up to those marks that we found earlier, I slow down. But there's no way I could spin that by hand that fast. No way I can Now let me get my rag and we'll see how it did. Very windy day out here. Always check your rag, make sure the wind didn't blow anything on it. Because when I mean, you're trying to take scratches out, you're not trying to put them in. Even after a good washing, you'll find that you have a lot of end stuff on there. But this is what I like about Griot's products. Watch how easy this comes off. Look at that, it's off. That's one, just one of many reasons I like their products so good. Or so well. be hard to tell in this light get you off the tripod yeah look at that shine 
no mark on it whatsoever. I know it's kind of hard for you to tell in, the, in this lighting, but I can see it. They are gone. So I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do the whole vi car. I'll come back whenever I start using a 3 inch one so I can show you how it works. It's exactly the same. But yeah, let's get after it. Get this car done. Alright. Got the big part done. Whole car. <clears throat> All I have left to do is the front face here, front bumper area. The smaller areas like this. Around the ornaments. <laughs> ornaments. Christmas is coming. Oh, you can tell I got that on my mind. Around the emblems. The mirrors. Area like this. And the back bumper. As you can see, looking really good. Now let's get on with those areas. Got a little baby brother here. Same as a big daddy. Centering as good as you can. The reason I have this is for smaller areas like this. You know, the big put, the big buffer would beat this to death. Whereas the smaller one fits it perfect. So yeah, same process as the big one. Just to apply your product. Work it in. There you go. As you can see, this is perfect for smaller pieces like this, getting in tighter areas. Always keep your buffer on there until it stops. So does a sling product. Just like that. Finished. Now I'll use this the same on the rest of the cars I did just now here. On the other mirror, the back spoiler area and stuff. I still have a few places I'll have to get by hand. But now that you see how this works, let me get to it and I'll show you that the product. So stay tuned.
Whew, just about done. Even when you have a buffer, it's a big job. Now I'm going to show you something that I normally wait till last to get. And the reason for it is, is some of the dirtiest spots. But the back side of the mirror is here in the cracks. And the wheel well liner. And I'll show you why the wheel well liner here in a second. But you can, you can see why. I say the back sides of the mirrors, they're tucked in here. You can't get to them any other kind of way. And it's a painted surface, so why not protect it? Just like you do the rest of the car. The really good thing about this Grio's sealer is you don't have to wait for it to dry to buff it off. It actually recommends that you don't let it dry, which is pretty cool. But yeah, so let me show you. Painted surface, so why not get it, right? I'm looking to shine on it now. And of course, I'll be getting inside the door wells. But I always get these areas last. Just in case you would happen to get something in the pad or something. But this gets constantly beat by rocks and stuff. You can see how the paint finish is wore compared to the rest of the car. So I'll crank it up, turn the wheel, get this wheel good, all the way around, wherever there's metal, and paint it plastic. Turn it the other way, get the other side, and then I'll also get the rockers. Because that's another area that gets just bombarded by rocks and stuff but as you can see what a shine keep in mind this is 1993 paint and I do this regularly I keep it washed keep it waxed and once a year I put a sealer on it does it hurt heck no does it help can't do nothing but help
Oh, just in case you're wondering if, you're, if that helps. Here's a prime example. This is the other side. I forgot to show you on that side. You can see how dull the paint is right in this area. And it's just from years of rocks and road debris hitting it. So does actually polishing and waxing help it? Well, let's find out. I already know the answer, but I'm going to show you. Let's see if this will stand up right here. It's going to be kind of cockeyed, but I want you to be able to see it. I'm not doing any foolery. A few drops. Just as normal. Blot it on there like normal. that fast. Get the rag. Wipe it off. Now is it going to be like new? By no means. I mean with the scratches and gouges and stuff there's no way it could be like new. But take a look at the difference. And you got to admit that's pretty doggone good. Let me tell you guys, even with a polisher, it still takes time to do all that. I did the outside, washed it, dried it, polished the outside, the mirrors, all the nooks and crannies, the underneath of the rock is underneath the front bumper, underneath of the rear bumper, inside the door jams, inside the hatchback, <clears throat> clean the carpet, clean the seats, Whew. but it's well worth it. I mean, look at that shine. Well worth it. Now I know that it's protected for a good six months. So, springtime will be ready for good waxing, which I don't mind doing. Uh, I like spending time. A lot of people go on ceramic coatings, and eventually I probably will. Right now, nowhere local carries them. <clears throat> so, I'm more of a conventional guy anyway. Wax, polish, stuff like that. It's easier for me to correct stuff, because once you put that... Um, ceramic coating on you can't correct anything but here we go I just thought you would like to see what I do I still have to coat the the cow right there or that stupid that needs it leaves everywhere so to keep the yard from being all I mean the car from being all dusty I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day finish up with some outro shots and you guys know what to do you be careful out there get out there and enjoy your car whether you're driving it washing it or just sitting there looking at it main thing is it's yours you're paying for it enjoy the crap out of it you guys take care and we'll see you next video